What's up guys, welcome back. We are in the 11th hour for the W108, getting this done for Alpine Volks Fair in just about three days, three, four days. So when I left you guys off, uh, it was in this state, all the fabrications done. Uh, before I started filming this episode, I just finished notching the upper cups in the front for the airlines to come out in the upper brackets. And I have just cleaned up and prep sold the brackets themselves and I'm about to paint them as I start running airlines. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm working on the management and this is the square tank that you guys saw in the first kind of unboxing video. To stand the tank up, I took some tubing and some flat stock and basically built some feet that this can, you know, basically support the tank. And I bought some, uh, I got some long bolts. So these are basically come up to the bottom of the MDF and secure the tank. And originally I was just gonna use the tubing as standoffs, uh, but then I realized it'd probably be smart to run some flat stock under it for added support and bracing. Uh, just because once I get everything mounted to it, there might be some leverage on the tank while you're driving the car and I wouldn't want uh, it to become loose or anything like that. So that was the overall gist of welding some tube to this piece of flat stock. Maybe in the future, I'll end up doing a deeper dive and uh, a better video for you guys or a better series of bagging one of these cars. But to be fair, if you have one and you don't have the means to uh, make your own mounts and brackets, head to twistedimages.com. I don't know Phil personally, uh, but I know a lot of people who do and he makes uh, a bracket kit for the same bags that I'm using in this car, the Slam Specialties SS5s. And to be honest, I think the front brackets are a hundred bucks and the rears are like 80 bucks. So for probably $200 shipped or right around there, all you gotta do is bolt them to the SS5 bags and put them in the car. There is some drilling, you gotta drill some holes and trim some things here and there, but that's one avenue. Uh, the way I've been doing it is a little bit uh, more involved because I'm building everything uh, from scratch basically, or from materials, I should say. But I've got the tank up on these feet that I made. That gives it a little bit of a pass through. So with the manifold mounted here, I'll turn this plate around. Or like I said, I'll, I'll make a custom plate. Uh, the harness can escape underneath the tank and all of the lines uh, can escape underneath the tank. All right, so Corey showed up yesterday. Haven't seen him since uh, I moved here in August last year. He rolled down from New Hampshire. Well, I guess technically, yeah, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, yeah. Didn't know if you left from Mass. How long did it take you? You left at 16, 2 in the morning? Yeah, 16 hours. 16 hours? So I moved, moved pretty quick. He was scooting along. <laughs> We've done this drive a handful of times from New Hampshire uh, here to Chattanooga for Riverside over the years. And a few times when I've bought some vehicles and whatnot. And the 23190 proved its worth. Uh, hammered, made good time and no issues. And now it's here. We're going to get things cleaned up. You probably can't see it yet, but I got the 108 down off the blocks last night. Uh, Corey helped me finalize a few things there. I was finishing up the trunk and some wiring. It's on the ground, off the blocks, on the wheels, and I am buzzing on this car. So I'm going to show you guys that car here shortly, but I wanted to show you guys Corey's 190. If you're new to the channel, you haven't seen this car yet, but uh, he finished this car a couple years ago, and uh, it's been on a few episodes in the past. So in 2013, I had a 190 as well that I had bagged. Mine was an early model that had the small bumper strip and this one being a later model has the big door cladding, but uh, definitely making me miss mine. But I drove that car to Sowo in Helen, Georgia in 2013. Uh, three friends of mine and I barreled down in that car uh, from where I lived in New Hampshire. It was about 20 hours flat, 21 almost. It's cool that Corey's kind of doing that same trip. Uh, we didn't go to Chattanooga. On our way to Helen in my 190, we just made a straight shot down to Helen, but uh, he's here for a couple days before we leave for Helen. And the weather's supposed to be great, so thankful for that. Gonna get the cars washed, gonna get the 108 out here and get that washed as well. And maybe, hopefully, take it for a drive and just kind of make sure everything's tight, make sure everything's good. Since I did build all the brackets, I wanna make sure everything is sitting the way it should in transit at all different ride heights as well. What are you doing in there? Trying to get these back seats in. There's a little bit more stuff back here than used to be. 
Oh, that, that <laughs> feels like some mob stuff. That feels like some good fella stuff. All right, guys, interior's back in. Car is on the wheels. I've had it out. I've had it aired up and down. And I am so stoked. So stoked on this car. Corey and I are about to run to the hardware store, get a few things. And uh, maybe while we're out, I'll air it down somewhere and we'll get a good look around the car. I'll show you guys what it looks like on the wheels and kind of tell you about the wheels as well and how that all came together with the help of the wheel price guys and searching through their app. A lot of you guys got on there, listed your wheels. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to find a set of wheels in time for the car. So I'm super excited on cloud nine right now for this car. And uh, yeah, we'll get it outside and uh, give you guys a good look around the car. But I have to give a huge thank you and shout out to my friend Perry Freeman from Quick Everett's Garage for the vintage corduroy rope Mercedes-Benz hat. If you guys know me well enough, you know that I collect vintage hats. Rope hats and corduroy hats are amidst the ones I look for the most. And this Mercedes-Benz one is just the coolest one to add yet. Okay, first drive. Everything felt good coming down the driveway. No major squeaks or rattles, but we're not at speed yet. So let us see. And I don't know what I can do for turning with these wide wheels up front either at this ride height. It's pretty good so far. It feels pretty good on the air though, doesn't it? It does. It's not like too bouncy. I mean, this road is relatively smooth. Oh, it does feel pretty good. I was afraid like brackets are going to be moving around. There's going to be all sorts of squeaks and stuff. And this is this is me being like, I'm not good at any of this stuff, and I'm not a professional. Uh, and then I'm always like relatively surprised when I get a car done. I'm like, oh, it's actually pretty smooth down the road. <laughs> All right, guys, here it is. It's done. It's off the jacks, off the blocks, on the ground, and I am buzzing about this car. Could not be happier with how the car came together. Let's talk wheels. So as you guys know, I was working with the wheel price guys on trying to find a set of wheels on the app. That app has links in the video's description for both the iOS and Android devices. It's a free wheel classifieds app. So I implore you guys to get on there. It's, it's where the wheels are now. But we worked together on trying to find a set of wheels in time for Alpine Volksfair and Helen to get a set of wheels on this car. So what I went with were this set of 17 inch two piece Schmidt TH lines. Most of you guys have seen these wheels. They've been around for a long time. They've been an iconic wheel for a long time. And my friend Tony in Fort Lauderdale, Florida had these available and he had put them on the app. And oddly enough, they were five by 112, which is the PCD of this Mercedes and the specs that would fit perfectly in the car. There were a few other wheels that I'd looked for on the app and there were a handful that I was really kind of considering. My friend JJ in Massachusetts had a really cool set of five spoke Kodiak racing wheels, which I'd never even heard of before. And those were kind of of interest to me, but the offsets were like really weird. I think they were like a mega high offset. So I, I was doing a bunch of numbers crunching there. There was a set of RSs on there that were five on 112 as well that I wouldn't have to deal with adapters or anything like that. So there were a few options. I mean, a lot of you guys, I've got the push notifications on. Every time I talk about it on Instagram or here on the YouTube channel, we saw a lot of different listings coming in on the app. So super stoked to see a lot of you guys getting on the app and getting a lot of your wheels listed. But Tony hit me up, let me know that these were on the app 
Um, what we're looking at here is 17 by eight and a half ET34 up front and 17 by nine ET28 in the back. And after pulling some measurements, I was fairly certain that I was gonna be able to fit these wheels, no problem. And they're on here with no spacers, no adapters, uh, and they're fitting exactly the way I wanted wheels to, to fit. Yeah, so Tony came through. These were the wheels I'd selected. Um, and as I mentioned, not really being a huge fan of TH lines, I am a huge fan of this car on TH lines. I think this works really well. I was curious as to how the white centers were gonna look. This is Candy White, which was a Mark VI Volkswagen color, I believe. So thank you guys so much for getting on that app and getting your wheels listed. I mean, I've been on there every day. I even asked Corey, I'm like, have you gotten the app yet? He's like, yep, I'm on it. I'm on it right now. He's on it right now, scrolling on it. <laughs> so actually, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, these wheels look really good on his Red 190. I was thinking about that earlier when they were sitting next to each other. Like, we should just switch just to, just to test them both out. Yeah. Leave in the comments what you think about that. If you think Corey's Red 190 on air would look good on these Schmitz with the white centers. I think the white centers would look really good on a red car. that's going to do it for this episode guys thank you so much for all of the continued support and massive thanks to bag riders and wheel price for all of their continued support on these projects and on this channel I want to thank all of you guys who have come over to the patreon as well your support means everything to me can't wait to cruise through the smoky mountains into helen georgia where the next few episodes will be coming from at alpine volks fair 2022 we'll see you guys in the next episode